Hello, I am Inez Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create a nice 3D title just like this one. Alright, looks pretty awesome and if you don't wish to follow this tutorial or you wish to support our channel, you can also buy the project files on our website, a link will be in the description. And This is a template for Cinema 4D and After Effects. You will need Cinema 4D for this as well. But without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. So we're going to create a new composition right here and I'm going to call this Main Comp, make it Full HD. 30 FPS, 10 seconds long, should be fine, click OK. And then right here, actually just at first, we're going to right click New and we can choose here a Maxon Cinema 4D file. I'll click on that and I will just save it as Title 3D and save that. And that's going to open up uh, Cinema 4D. I have uh, Cinema 4D Studio. Um, you will probably have light or something different. Um, for this tutorial you will need Studio uh, to do all the options that I will be doing in, uh, uh, in Cinema 4D. Uh, for example using the MoGraph here. Um, but I don't know exactly what we have in Cinema 4D and not so I'm going to resize my window here. Um, but Studio is really worth of getting if you're planning on working with 3D. Cinema 4D is really powerful. I love it. Um, so yeah, uh, we are we have Cinema 4D here. Let's create a floor first. So uh, let's create a floor like so. And then we're going to create a new material. And actually, we'll need to find one online. You can find a metal texture seamless. Just Google it. I can share everything with you guys. Um, but if we're going to uh, create a new material here, we can rename this to floor and we can load up an image. So I have my texture right here, I will open that up and then I will go to the reflectance channel, delete the default specular and create a new backman here. Go to Fresnel and I'm going to uh, make this a conductor and make it iron. Then I will go back to my color channel, I will copy my color here, copy the shader and go to the bump map, check that on and paste it over here. And we're also going to add a filter, so click on the arrow again, filter go into the filter and we're going to desaturate it so it's complete, uh, completely black or white. We can add some contrast here um, and then play around with the brightness to whatever you want. And then go back here and let's see what this looks like already. So uh, let's just make a quick preview. Um, I think this looks okay so I'm going to change the strength maybe to 10 so it's not that intensive. Then go back to the reflectance and I'm going to add a little bit of roughness right here into my shader, something like 10 should be fine. And then also uh, remove the reflections and the specular, um, maybe no specular at all um, and just a bit of a reflection. And then I'm going to close this. Uh, you can also add a sky here, so add a sky, you can, uh, or you can go for a physical sky, let's go for a physical one. And we are going to preview this once more just to see what this looks like. And actually you should go into the render settings and change your renderer to a physical render engine uh, which is going to make uh, everything a lot better. So I'm going to make this um, HD so we can... Oh, it's been a while since I used HD so that's why I'm wrong here. Uh, so that's 1280 by 7, uh, 720. Uh, just for previewing it's going to be a little quicker than full HD so that's why. You can even go lower if you want to, um, but this looks alright, I like it. Uh, so let's start with the text. Um, we can create a new text, so go to MoGraph text. Um, if you don't have um, MoGraph, you can also make this text just like we see it here. Just Google it for your version of Cinema 4D, uh, but it should work. Go into the text and center this out, so go to the middle, and I'm going to write tolerate it. Okay. I'm going to rotate it, so to go to the rotate tool and for the X here, we're going to rotate it 90 degrees like so and go to the move tool and actually I have a plugin drop to floor which is completely free, you can find it online uh, but this just drops it to the floor immediately, you can also do this with the arrows but it's a lot quicker 
uh, this way of course. So we have our text, um, go to the text and we're going to add a little bit more depthness, uh, so a little bit more depth, maybe something like 40 drop to floor and that's it. Uh, Alright, I like this. I'm going to change my font to Lado, uh, which is one of my favorite uh, fonts at the moment, so I'm going to use it um, if I find it right here. It should be, come on. All right, Lado Black. Uh, I will use the black one. Okay, nice and thick. Then we're going to the cap, and I'm going to change my start and end cap to a fillet cap. And there we go. Maybe change it to three uh, for the radius, and now we have some bevel on our text. So, and that's looking pretty nice. Let's preview this. All right, there we go. But as you can see, the bevel is nice, uh, it's cool, but the bevel is still very uh, fake because the bevel itself doesn't have a bevel, it's very sharp here. So what I always do actually is go to the uh, MoGraph text and I add it to a connector uh, because it has to get connected uh, so everything gets, uh, yeah, is one object. And as you can see, it kind of fucks it up, but if we are going to... Uh, add this to a null here, so hold Alt and press G, uh, yeah, G on the keyboard. And uh, now we group this, and now we can add a bevel um, deformer here. So go to the bevel and drag this in here, and you're going to see right away we have an extra bevel. We are also going to check use angle here and change the offset to 0.2, for example. And if we zoom in now, you can see that we have a bevel on top of our bevel. And it's going to make it look a lot nicer in render. So you can see the highlights on our, our bevel, uh, which are very cool, actually. We can create a new material. Create a new material and make this metal reflect text. And there we go. And go for a color uh, of dark gray here. And go to the reflect, uh, reflectance. Delete the specular, of course, again. And we're going to add a backman here. Add some uh, some roughness, maybe a little bit more than we did at first. Uh, we can keep the uh, reflection quite high, and we can keep the specular as it is right now. Go to the layer fresnel and go for a conductor again, and add a iron uh, conductor. And there we go. And let's just add this to our text on top. So add it to the null actually. And if we're going to render this, let's see what we get. Okay, looks cool. Looks really cool. Okay, so now we're going to add a spotlight. So add a spotlight to the scene. Um, this is going to be the orange spot. Um, we can actually color this kind of orange. There we go. And then go to cameras and set active object as a camera. And now you can see true or spot, and we can actually position it uh, the way we should. Uh, we would position a camera, uh, which is also a very nice way of working. So I'm going to position it right over here. Um, nice, actually close to the ground. And there we go. I'm going to add a soft shadow. Then I'm going to duplicate my orange spot, so hold Ctrl and drag it out. And I'm going to rename this to blue spot. And then we're going to make this one blue, of course. And then again, camera set active as object, as camera. Um, this one we can place it over here somewhere. And then jump back into our camera, which we don't have, so create a new camera. And we're going to jump into our camera, and here we're going to um, well, move it up, of course. And on the pitch, we're going to change it to minus 90 degrees, and just move it up, like so. And then uh, for the X, actually the X can be centered, and the Z, we're going to center this out a little bit more. And there we go. Maybe we can go back to our text and go to the object itself, and add a little bit of horizontal spacing. Okay, let's preview this. Alright, so this looks really cool. Um, maybe the shadows of the sky are a little bit too hard. Uh, but we, we can change that if you want to. So now we get these nice highlights. Um, yeah, on tour of our uh, bevel. As you can see right here, our bevel looks very realistic, very cool. Um, we can sharpen add the lights maybe a little bit and maybe add like go to details and Make the outer angle a little bit smaller just you can see it over here. We can also make it a lot more intense 
and we can play with the details fall off inverse and just increase the fall off here so that way we can get some nice highlights at the beginning here and then just spread it like you want it and go to the blue and also do the same thing so inverse just make it nice and long and also increase the intensity maybe let's preview Alright, so now it's up to you to uh, play with the settings of the lights until you like it. Um, I kind of like this one, so we'll keep it as it is. Uh, we can also play a little bit with the sky, so let's go back to our sky. And actually, I kind of like the shadow uh, the way it is, um, but let me show you what you can do as well. You can go to the time and location and play with this, and that's also going to uh, modify the location of our uh, sun here. So you can see right now, it's later in the evening. We're going to get less light from our sky, so maybe I'm going to just make it a little bit sooner, uh, maybe 2 o'clock. And we're going to get different results here. Okay, I kind of like it how it uh, how it is dark between the text, um, but we can fix that if we're going to for um, add an effect global illumination. And here you have to take care of choosing the right settings. If you're going for animation, I would prefer not to work with global illumination because it's uh, really time consuming. Um, but for image previews, you can see uh, if we're going to, for uh, for example, go for a light mapping here. Uh, let's just do one test render. You're going to see that it's going to take a lot longer. But if you're going to check the results, uh, your shadows are going to be um, brighten up. And actually, if you increase that number that you saw, uh, you're going to get better results. Um, you can also play uh, around with different lights, so let's not use global illumination. What you can use is uh, effect ambient occlusion, and this is going to add some uh, connection shadows uh, of your object. So if you're going to preview this, and actually I'm going to my settings here, I'm not going to save it, and I'm out outputting the current frame, and then I will just render this to the picture viewer. And that way we can compare uh, images up front and afterwards. So in the meantime, I will add another light, a spotlight this time. And I'm just going to increase it in Y here, like so. Position it a little bit more up here. And then make it cover something like this. Also add a shadow. And maybe decrease the intensity here. Okay, this is rendered. Let's do the other one. So immediately you can see that this is uh, way too bright, so I'm going to lower this. Something different, okay. Less intense. Still too intense. Okay, so keep a low number. Okay, so this brightens it up, and you can see in the in the middle, it's going to be a little bit brighter than on the edges, and that's going to give a little bit more depth. So, and that's also a way of uh, playing around with lights. Uh, you can give that a different color if you want to, but now I get something that I quite like. So you can see here, um, it just has a little bit more detail in the text, just of that uh, small light over there. And you can position that light maybe more a little bit to the left, so it's not that centered. Uh, which I would like, so I'm going back to the um, position here of the X and I'm going to move it somewhere around here. And that's basically it. So now I will go to my camera and I will go to the coordinations. Uh, I will go back to my zero keyframe, click on the key for uh, yeah, creating a keyframe. I'm going to make it around 300 uh, frames long, which means 10 seconds. Then go to the end of uh, my frames here and then I'm going to zoom in like so. So zoom in, maybe something like this, click on the new keyframe, go back to the beginning, and actually I want to zoom out a lot more here, so something like this, and create keyframe. So now we get something like this. A slow and steady zoom, and for some examples that should could work, but for this tutorial I wanted to achieve something different, so we go to window, we go to timeline F-curve, and we're going to see the curves now, so click on that camera, press 
H on the keyboard and that's going to reveal everything on frame. And for the first keyframe I'm going to just uh, put this at the beginning so we have no curve at the beginning. And you can click on the end keyframe here and this we're going to bring it down like so. So it's going to ramp really fast and then it's going to zoom out very slowly. So let's see how that works. Actually, I want to, uh, I want it to happen a lot faster. So what I will do is actually move my last keyframe towards something like 40, and I'm going to bring down my curve here. And there we go. Let's preview. Still too slow. Alright, so let's keep this for now. And actually, at that frame, I don't want it to be zoomed in as much. Okay. Go back to that timeline and just play around with the curve here. And actually, you can see that it's got reset a little bit. Okay. Actually, I'm going to do it a little bit more like this. Maybe a little longer. So you can see it's really playing with everything. But just find the right spot, and once you got that, all right, let's use this one. We can go back to the settings, uh, change this to full HD. 9020 by 1080. Um, let's use all the frames. And actually, we don't have to render it out if we don't want to. We have to save everything right here. Let's save it. Yes. Go back to After Effects. And now we can make this as long as we need it to be. So 10 seconds, 300 frames. And now we should see uh, if we go to Effects, we can change this to Standard Draft here or actual Final. And just wait a little bit. And there we have our render, but what I do prefer is to actually export it from Cinema 4D and just render it out and import it in After Effects as an image sequence because that's going to work a lot quicker. Um, After Effects doesn't update that easily uh, with our 3D files. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to do some final grades here. So right click new adjustment layer and actually I'm going to change my composition settings to 800 and I'm not going to log the aspect ratio. So 800, there we go. So now we have it nice and wide. Change this to actually software. And there we go. So now we can uh, see it like this. And that's going to be a lot quicker, so if you want to, you can do it like that. And here we're going to uh, our adjustment layer, and we're going to go curves and actually we need to have it as a final so what I will do is actually go back to Cinema 4D and go to my render settings and I'm going to actually save it because that's uh, just going to be more real time than it is right now so uh, let's go here and export it create a new folder for export image sequence open that up 3D title save it and we don't need an alpha channel. Um, I'm just going to use it as a PNG. Uh, it's not that important. Maybe 16 bit per channel. Um, and compositing file. Uh, do we need one? Let me think. No, we don't need one. Uh, so let let that um, as it is. Um, then physical and OK. And apart from that, everything is OK. So um, we can just render it out. So click on uh, the render to picture viewer. And that's going to render our, our entire image sequence. Uh, so then we can import it in Cinema 4D. Uh, 
then we can import it in After Effects and continue with uh, the tutorial. Alright, so just for the tutorial purpose, I'm going to use my preview file. So I'm going to import that file here. And that's my render over here. And I'm going to import that um, as my image. Okay. Um, drag this into your composition and just uncheck everything. We can put the adjustment layer on top. Check it on again. And this is going to be my grading. So. As you can see here, it's a less contrasty. It depends on whatever you get as a result, uh, but I uh, export it as a TIFF in 16-bit. Uh, so if I go to my curves here and add a curve uh, to my adjustment layer, and actually I already did that, so I'm going to delete one of these. We can bring down our shadows, bring up our highlights to whatever we want. We can play with the reds here, bring them down in the shadows, go to the blue channel, increase the blue channel in the shadows maybe bring it down here in the highlights and then for the green we can play with a little bit more greens and there we go so now we get something like this looks pretty cool already uh, we can go to blur and sharpen and add an unsharp mask at 25 radius and bring down of course the intensity a bit but that's going to make it pop a little bit more and we can add some as uh, tie lines glows uh, and increase the uh, radius and decrease the intensity and there we go we get some nice glow so that's completely up to you um, actually I think it's it has enough glow and I'm going to add a little bit of tint effect here so in black and white and just lower that uh, amount here so we get it a little bit more, um, yeah, desaturated. Okay, so once you have that, you can export it as whatever you want. Uh, but this is actually how to create uh, that nice 3D title. And actually, what I also did, but uh, you might not have that, is uh, add RSMB, a real smart motion blur. And if you add that to your scene, you're going to see that in movement, it's going to have some really nice motion blur. If we increase that number here, it's also extremely fast, but it's going to give the idea of motion blur, which looks a lot better in motion, of course. So if you, um, yeah, uh, so yeah, it's a really nice plugin. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a like. Also, subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.